Hello everyone, <laughs> how's it going? Welcome, so glad you're here. So, today, today's art live stream, as you've noticed, is much later in the day because I discovered I had a lot of problems with my internet. That's why it's been so grainy and uh, laggy and um, pixelated uh, these past couple of live streams. Just long story, but we should have far better internet now and it could be getting even better. I just got it installed today, brand new internet, brand new service, brand new hardware, everything's new, um, but the upload speeds should be perfect. Um, I've ran many speed tests and they're all coming in at really strong speeds. So hopefully <laughs> the live stream will be much better and much clearer for you today um, than it has been uh, recently. So yesterday we did the pencils for the Superman versus Doomsday on this sketch cover here. So um, I really wanted to do the inks yesterday, but with laggy internet, why waste my time? So waited till we had everything set up for today. That's why we're starting so late in the day, but I'm glad you can join me. So uh, hopefully you're doing well in this COVID-19 season. This is wrapping up week 10 of the COVID-19 uh, live stream. So crazy, crazy. It's been 10 weeks that we've been doing this. Um, but enough of this. Let's go get to work on some Superman versus Doomsday inks. Just re clip into the rig here. Oops, I got to turn my light on. I thought something looked weird. I forgot to turn my light on. My, my bonus light. My extra light. So let's see what we can do. Let's, we'll, I'll push the camera in and out as we go so that you can see detail closer up as we work. So I'm gonna be inking mostly with Pigma Micron pens like I always do. My 0A, 01, 005 are my go-tos. Those are my favorites. Probably use, I might use some pen, or uh, what are these called? These are the Zebra brush pens. I might use some Zebra brush pen and maybe a little bit of Pentel pocket brush pen. Um, so uh, we wanna start with uh, Superman's, um, it's weird that Superman looks fuzzy over there. Why is that? There we go, now we're, now we're focused. It's like, come on now. Just got the internet working better. Don't tell me that the, <laughs> The, the focus is gonna wig out on us. So, um, so we got Superman's heat vision as the forefront element here. And I wanna do that in knocked back line art. So it has more of an energy sort of look. So where everything else will be in black lines, I want the, the uh, heat vision in red. So it really stands out as an energy sort of signature. So I'm using my T-square and a red micron here. The zero, not that I'm not using a T-square, I'm using my triangle, my triangle, which I often use with my T-square depending on what backgrounds I'm inking. I'm inking a nice straight line. Drafting tools are so important if you're a comic book artist. So I'm doing this in a color, colored line because when we this will be a colored image, most likely Copic markers is the plan. Um, I want it. I want. That's why I'm using red. Otherwise, if this was just strictly a black and white image, I might not even bother to use color line art. But this will be a color image, so I might as well get some color lines for the energy effect. It'll really translate nicely when we get to when we get all the color dropped in. So let's see. We have a uh, good put some some spark lines here of where it's actually grazing. Doomsday. It's striking some of his bone protrusions. So 
So that just kind of gets things started. All right. So, um, so we're probably going to jump back and forth between Doomsday and Superman. But right now, Doomsday is most, he is furthest in the foreground. So I'm going to start working on him. And um, actually, I should pull up uh, my Doomsday reference here to make sure I get elements of Doomsday correct. Let's see. Well, I have it in my, yeah, there we go. My most recent Google searches. I want to make sure I get those bone placement things, uh, placement of the bone projectile, uh, not projectiles, they're not, he's not shooting off bones, he's, um, protrusions, that's the word, not projectiles, protrusions, I knew it was a pro something word. So we're just going to start here at the foremost hand, here in the foreground, starting with the the bone knuckles. Nice jiggity jaggedy lines. Probably do a lot of textured lines throughout this entire piece. That's why I didn't pencil too tightly. I really wanted to keep the energy and roughness of the pencil line on the board and that will inform my inks. Hope everyone's doing well today. It's kind of weird not doing the live stream this morning. It's actually nice to kind of sleep in a little bit. I'll do my best to respond to questions and comments while I ink here. So I'm so glad y'all are here. Your son is literally jumping up and down on the couch, excited to watch. <laughs> well, excited that y'all can be here to join me. Hello to everyone who is watching here live. And you're watching this on replay? Thank you so much for watching this on replay. A little message to the future. Probably about an, at least an hour and a half into the future. Have ever drawn Star Wars characters? Um, I have drawn some Star Wars characters. I have even I've drawn a, um, some Star Wars character here. Star Wars characters here on my YouTube channel. Just uh, take a look through my um, my playlists, and uh, I think there's a Star Wars playlist. I've got I've done a couple of Darth Vaders and uh, and and a Ahsoka. Tano here recently. So be sure to check those out. Don't check them out now. Stay here with me here during the live stream. When we're done, you can go and check out those Star Wars illustration videos I've done. Have I played the Lego DC superhero or super villains game? I have not. The last Lego game I played, or I played and I still hadn't finished it about halfway through it, was the first Marvel superheroes Lego game. I had the original Batman Lego game, but I'm only about halfway through that one. Heck, I had that one for PSP. many, many years ago. 
So, yeah, don't play a lot of video games. Just don't have a lot of time for it. If iced water is called ice water, and if iced ink, uh, iced tea is called iced tea, what, what, what's going on here? If iced water is called ice water, and iced tea is called iced tea, then what do you call iced ink? I don't think you can ink or ice your ink because then it wouldn't, I mean, that, that does, I don't even know. I, I'd never heard of that art supply. Uh, I, I don't know. I've never heard of anyone working with um, ink that has been frozen. Sounds like an interesting technique. I'll have to do some search to see if there's a, I don't know, YouTube tutorial on how to ink with ice, with, with frozen ink. That's a very interesting, it's a uh, very interesting um, concept. Don't really, really understand how that would work, but you know, you, you learn something new all the time. So we're working on the uh, shoulder bones here. So I want to be careful to make sure his the, the bone knuckles differentiate from the shoulder bones. So I'll be switching from the 08 to the 01 back and forth. Using the 01 for some smaller, tighter detail to help create that sense of distance. See, I'm gonna grab my pencil here and double check my muscles, how they're fitting together. All right. Everything checks out. Just wanna start building. Building that out. I'm going to fill this part in black, nice big solid black to give some depth and shape to the, the uh, pectoral muscle.
What's my favorite fight scene that I've drawn in comics? Oh my gosh, I have drawn so many fight scenes in comics. Um, you know, probably, I, I, golly, I mean, it's hard to narrow it down because so much, I've drawn so many fun stories. There, I like so many different opportunities that I've gotten to draw certain things for different reasons. But you know, one thing that I really enjoyed, and it was a major fight scene, 175 characters or figures on four separate covers, my Hunt for Wolverine cover. Covers, I should say. Four connecting covers. Uh, I don't know if y'all saw that. It was four connecting covers that came out um, for the four uh, Hunt for Wolverine miniseries. And um, I did a variant cover, and we I hid like all these different Wolverines in the cover. And uh, so it was this big, big fight scene with all these Marvel heroes and villains. And that was so much fun to draw. It was so much detail. Took me a long time to draw it, but it was really, really a whole lot of fun. So that would be way up there. That would definitely be be a very unique um, art opportunity. Can I give you a character to draw on your fan art page? Uh, sure. How about how about Iron Man? There you go. There's a character for you to draw. Go for it. Let's see, I need to structure out his chest bone protrusion thingy a little bit more. Have you ever tried painting in the Alex Ross style? I have not, no. Um, working with, I think he works with oils, I believe. I believe, I'm not quite, I'm not 100% certain, but I've gotten the impression it was, he's inking with oils. Uh, and that takes a very long time to work with. And that is a an art medium I am not I have not had much experience with, so to try to paint at that level um, would 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 be very difficult. Um, nothing wrong with it being difficult. Are we back there? Hey gang, I don't know what happened to the internet. Like I said, it's brand new. Just got the brand new service. Uh, it tested it at a very. Uh, it tested at a very high speed, so far higher than the speeds that I've used in the past, so hopefully we're not digitized or laggy or anything like that. Um, there's, uh, there's still some, it's still activating, it's still, it's not like, the download speeds are still too low, but the upload speeds are very, testing very high, so I assumed I'd still be good to do a, a live stream here, so. Um, it's interesting that it that it froze there for a sec. I hope that's not common. We do have the technician guy coming back tomorrow um, uh, to make sure I installed everything correctly. So uh, because we have these low speeds where it should not be load low download speeds, but um, but like I said, the upload speeds are testing really well. I mean, like 20, 20 megabits per second upload. So that's that's more than enough to uh, to live stream from my my research. So so hopefully we'll be good for the rest of the live stream here.
What are my tips for drawing multiple characters in one piece? Well, we've got two characters in this one piece. Um, tips? Oh gosh, there, there's almost an infinite number of tips. I mean, it all depends on what your end goal is. Uh, what story are you trying to tell? That's the thing I think of. What is the story I want to tell? Here I'm telling a story of Superman is fighting Doomsday. And um, what I think can make a, a, an illustration of multiple characters more e interesting is characters at different levels. Like we have Doomsday way in the foreground and then Superman here in the midground. So we have some depth between the two characters. So creating that depth, I think, can really uh, help make a multi-character shot interesting. Check out my playlist for the um, X-Men group shot I did. And I, I discuss a lot of my approach to drawing multiple character images in that uh, that series of videos. Um, there's a lot because I drew like, I think well over 20 X-Men, 1990s era uh, X-Men in that illustration. So, um, so it took like 20, 25 um, live streams to fully pencil, ink, and color it. So, uh, but uh, yeah, if you at least watch the beginning stages, you'll kind of get some of the tips as I walk through my everyone through my process of how I start to build a large group shot. And it's got its own dedicated playlist, or you can look in the YouTube live and just scroll to the very first YouTube live uh, live streams because those were some of the first ones I did when I started doing the YouTube live streams here on YouTube. So now we're doing the bones around his eyes and on his face here. Kind of goes around his brow and around his eyes. Which hero or villain has the most interesting design? Um, I'd say anything that Jack Kirby created. Those are some wild designs. I mean, Galactus alone, come on. Definitely some groundbreaking and iconic designs that have really in many ways uh, stood the test of time. And then his, his like crazy stuff is just so interesting to look at. It's so intricate, like stuff for the Eternals and things like that. What are my thoughts on Arteza fine line pens? Um, I have a set of the colored stuff and they're they're pretty good. They're pretty good. They're they're good for the especially for the price range. So if someone's starting out, that's a that could be a really great uh you don't have a huge super huge budget, but you have enough to get something of uh, fairly decent quality, then then Arteza can can be alright, you know. I haven't used a lot of Arteza, so I can't really speak to a lot of it, but um but some of the stuff that they sent me a while back I I enjoyed uh kind of uh, doing some sketching with. I think I have a video here still on my channel where I used, it was a sponsored video from Arteza. Um, you can see that here on my my channel. I used the Arteza fine line pens as well as the Arteza um, markers that were comparable to the Copic markers. I did a Spider-Man sketch cover illustration. So now we're working on the bone beard. Just getting those rocky protrusions jutting out of his jawline. And 
Am I inking and coloring in this stream or just inks? Just inks. We got a lot to ink, so this will strictly be the ink stream. I'll have to come back another time to do the colors. If I can't do something this weekend, then we'll 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 probably do colors on Monday. And we got his jaggedy bone teeth. Don't even hide behind his lips. They just come right out of that top lip, which is really kind of gross. When you think about it. it makes us really appreciate having a top lip. Instead of a monster face of bones. So I'm using the zero one micron right now to get some really nice, nice uh, lines going. Is the schedule for live streams changed? Not morning streams anymore, but afternoon? Um, we'll see, we'll see. Things will kind of be changing here a bit um, just due to other responsibilities I have. I've only been able to live stream three times a week right now instead of five. Uh, that will probably continue for a while. Um, I will see about still live streaming in the morning, but it might not be at 9 a.m. I might push it back a little bit. So we'll see. So stay tuned to my channel. Make sure you're subscribed to my channel and your uh, notifications are set to alert you when I schedule new live streams so that if there is any drastic change to the schedule, like today, today was a change because I, I did not have, uh, I was not able to access my internet this morning because I was uh, having repair come in and realized I needed to uh, change and upgrade my internet service and hardware. So that's what I've been doing today. So hopefully this live stream looks better than it has previously. Um, so that's why we're doing an afternoon live stream today. Um, and then we'll see how things happen tomorrow. Would I ever draw American Dream again? Um, yeah, yeah, she's a really fun character. Absolutely. The MC2 universe is a fun universe as well. I really had fun on that miniseries. Great working with Tom DeFalco. It was really cool. Why don't you just become a penciler and your drawing will inked, be inked by, by an inker? Uh, that's how I started my career. I, I started my career as a penciler and worked with uh, an inker. I worked with one inker a lot, uh, Larry Stucker. He and I both started at Extreme Studios working for Rob Liefeld. He started about six months before I, I came into the studio. And we got paired up together and we worked on Bad Rockin' Company and New Men. And then, um, then when Extreme shut down, everyone kind of went their separate ways. And then Larry and I both kind of ended up at DC Comics at the same time. And we got paired up for um, some Legion of Superheroes stuff. And then um, we got we, we, we teamed up again for um, Young Justice. So we did that together, Teen Titans. He was the inker on my first Wild Guard creator-owned miniseries. So, uh, so Larry and I worked together for a long time. I've worked with other inkers, but I really enjoy seeing the line art from initial concept all the way through to finished lines. So I really enjoy doing the ink. So, so I've, I've done a lot of years as a penciler and now I love doing uh, my work as a penciler and slash inker. Not opposed to working with inkers, it's just I really enjoy the inking process. So, um, so that's why I, I am not just a penciler anymore, but I'm a penciler inker. What is the first comic book I drew? Uh, that was a, the first published comic book work I did was for a humor comic book Marvel did called What The. I got that job while still in art school when I met the editor of the comic at a Dallas comic book convention and she hired me to do a one-page gag. It was an X-Men gag for their humor comic book. But uh, it'd still be a while before I started my full-time career and I, and I started my full-time career working for Rob Liefeld. 
at Extreme Studios. And the first comic I drew for him was called Bad Rock and Company. So that was a series I was doing, but they had me do an issue, a fill-in issue of Supreme, which actually came out prior to Bad Rock and Company number one. So uh, Supreme number 16 was like the third comic I drew for Rob, but the first one to come out. And I drew the Bad Rock and Company miniseries completely out of order. I think issue two was the first issue I drew because they had different writers on, on each issue. Each writer wrote a different issue. So I, um, I, I just worked on whatever plots they had turned in at the time. Are there any inkers I really look up to? Absolutely. Uh, all my friends who were inkers at uh, Extreme Studios, so Norm Ratman, Danny Mickey, Larry Stucker, Jonathan Sabal, Marlo Alquiza, really fantastic inkers. Um, really enjoyed um, them. Dan Panoshin, um, Artibero is another inker there at Extreme Studios. So all fantastic, fantastic at the craft. Um, uh, let's see, Scott Williams, love his work over Jim Lee. Uh, Klaus Jansen is a legend. Uh, I love Klaus's work. He does a lot of or at least used to do a lot of great stuff with um, John Romita Jr. So I'm a big fan of Klaus's work. Um, Dexter Vines, Mark Morales, they're incredible. I know there are far, far, far more. I just can't think of them all past and present. But those are just a few that come to the top of my head. Probably say Klaus Jansen is my favorite though because it's such a unique, unique look to it. Oh, and Dick Giordano. Dick Giordano from DC Comics in the 1970s and 80s specifically. Oh man, he did such amazing work with people like Jose Luis Garcia Lopez and and such. Oh man, I love seeing uh, um, love seeing um, Dick Giordano's work. I almost had a chance to meet him. We were supposed to be both be a, a, a guest at a specific convention, um, uh, but um, he wasn't able to attend. He was not well. Uh, he so uh, so he was he had to cancel his appearance and then he passed away. I think. Uh, later that year. Um, so I was really, it was really sad. One, that we lost him and two, that I didn't get a chance, that one chance to meet him uh, because I so admire his, his skills as an inker. I mean, it was such legendary lines, just really defined the look of the DC comics in the 1980s for me. I mean, just so clean, so classic. Oh, and something I like to do, and this is a, a tip for all you inkers there. Um, have you seen those uh, Marvel and DC like treasury editions where it's like, um, I forgot what they call. They're called, uh, there's a certain title for them. They're, they're like these news, black and white newsprint collections of their, like their comics. Like you'll get like, like a, like a 20, 20 to 25 comic run in, in, in these collections. Uh, I think at DC they're called Showcase, and at Marvel, I don't remember the name of the Marvel one. I don't have it there on my bookshelf. I had to find it. I got the one for Inferno, and um, and it's really great to see the black and white artwork because then you can really see what the inkers did, um, without the without the without the color enhancement. Uh, it's just strictly black and white line art, and I, I'd look at that and just marvel over the inks. Um, and you know, they're relatively inexpensive. I think they're about maybe 10 bucks. Uh, so one, it's great for some, uh, inexpensive bulk reads and two, it's great for studying an inker's, an inker's, uh, work.
and start putting some neck muscles in here. Who's my favorite Avenger? Uh, let's see. Great question. Um, in the comics, my favorite Avenger is She-Hulk. And in the movies, my favorite Avenger is Thor. Especially thanks to Thor Ragnarok. Really put Thor on the map for me. And characters I never really thought much about in the comics, like Nebula, I absolutely love in the movies. I think Nebula is one of the coolest characters, thanks to the movies. Just what they did with her and Karen Gillan's portrayal of Nebula made her such an interesting character on, in so many ways. It just really, especially during uh, an Endgame, just really, really fan so 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 well done. So such an amazing tragic character. I never thought I would say Nebula is one of my favorite characters because I never really read many comics that featured her in stories as a kid. So I never really got much exposure to her in the comics. What was the exact book I got by Bern Hogarth? Uh, Dynamic Anatomy. Dynamic Anatomy is the book that uh, I was taught um, life drawing from at, at the Art Institute of Dallas. Dynamic Anatomy. In fact, I think I still have that book from my art school days packed away somewhere. Do I have an online store available? Not yet. Not yet. I'm hoping to get an e-commerce page built out at some point, but that's been a bit slow going. I hope to get that done someday, but nothing currently. I have considered a big cartel page and I might have to go that route if I can't get the e-commerce portion of toddknock.com built. The Marvel Essential books. Yes, that's what they're called. Marvel Essential. Thank you. Thank you. I knew that was something. I knew it was Marvel something, 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 something. Marvel Essentials. Yes, look up for the Marvel Essentials for those black and white reprints. So, so cool. Especially if you want to study the inks. The, just the line, line art without, without the color. Which can be such an interesting experience. It just kind of almost changes your perception of the art you've remembered reading in black and white. What are my thoughts on fan uh, on variant covers? Um, you know, I think I think they can be really fun, especially when they're they're themed. Uh, you know, you can get like the 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 series of Venom variants or Gwen Stacy variants or Hulk variants, which Marvel will often do to celebrate uh, an anniversary of a certain character. I remember I did the the Venom variant, which ran on Uncanny X or X Men Gold issue twenty six. I want to say it was maybe. And uh, as, as in, in celebration of Venom's 30th birthday uh, a, a couple of years ago. Um, so, so, and it gives you, it gives people options. You know, I like to go in and to the comic shop and if, if there's like different covers for the comic, sometimes I'll pick the cover I like best. I don't seek to collect every variant cover. I'm not that kind of collector, but it's fun to have an option as like, oh, there's this cover, that cover, I want this one because that's the one I want to look at in my home the most. So yeah, I think, you know, it can be fun options. And then there's the rarity of them all. So it just all depends on what a person likes to collect, in my opinion. But I definitely have fun drawing them for sure. I've gotten to draw quite a few of them in the past and even in the present. So, uh, Am I excited to see Into the Spider-Verse 2? Absolutely. Love the first movie. Can't wait to see the second movie. For sure. First movie was done so, so well. Okay, so now we're on to the other side of the bone 
the bone shoulders. It's fun drawing these these bone protrusions. There's so much texture and detail that one can give them to create these kind of great. Are we back? Hey gang. So it paused again. Don't know why. Don't know why. When the Technician comes tomorrow. I will let them know what happened. So really, really, really weird. That's what I'm trying to say. Really weird. Starting to sound like Johnny Carson. Really weird. Weird, wild stuff. For those of you that might be too young to know, Johnny Carson was the host of the Tonight Show before Jimmy Fallon and uh, before Jay Leno. So um, I mostly watched him in the 80s when I was a kid. I think he retired from The Tonight Show in um, 1992. Yeah, I think it was 1992. You'd like to sing my take on Earthworm Jim or Battletoads? <laughs> right on. Yeah, I don't think those are characters I've ever drawn before. What's my favorite animated movie? Uh, whoo wee. Does Pixar count? Do Pixar movies count? Because I could definitely say the Toy Story movies are way up there for me. Of course, Spider-Verse is way up there. My favorite DC animated movies. I don't think I've really seen any DC animated movies. I know they make them. I know they put them out there, but, um, but I don't think I've seen any of them yet, now that I think about it.
Are the DC animated movies good? Are there any that anyone can recommend me to see? Justice League War was the best. Okay. Favorite non-superhero cartoon? Uh, oh. Man. Uh, I'd say King of the Hill is one of my favorites because I grew up in Texas, so watching King of the Hill is like watching a documentary for me. Dark Knight Returns Part 1 and 2? Okay, I'll have to look into that. I'll have to see if any of my the streaming services that I'm subscribed to have any of these. Gotham by Gaslight? They made an animated movie of Gotham by Gaslight? Because I remember I have the original uh, graphic novel that they did, drawn by Mike Mignola. And it's signed. Got it signed as a fan before... I think I was like 19 years old when I met Mike Mignola at a convention. And uh, strictly as a fan, you know, I was in line to get his autographs. Back in that day. And, uh, and he, he drew that. Love Mike Mignola's work. That Gotham by Gaslight is uh, pretty legendary. Okay, so now we're going to start to work on this other hand here. Character that I've never drawn, but I would like to. I've been kind of jonesing to draw some G.I. Joe. I, did, uh, I recently did a commission for someone. Uh, they, they wanted Cobra Commander. And um, so I was very excited to get a chance to draw Cobra Commander. And um, that kind of had me, kind of, kind of gave me the G.I. Joe bug. And I wanted to like draw more Joes and um, Cobra characters. Zartan and the Dreadnoughts. So, not that I really want to do a comic book, a G.I. Joe comic book necessarily, um, but I wanted to just draw some of my favorite Joes as a kid growing up. Because that, uh, that was one of my favorite non-superhero cartoons was G.I. Joe. I really enjoyed that one as well. You know, any of those 80s toy commercial cartoons. G.I. Joe, Transformers, Mask, etc. I dug all that stuff as a kid back in the back back then, and still, of course, enjoy it, enjoy it as an adult. Hasbro has put many of their those GI Joe cartoons on their uh, YouTube channel, and uh, they have the Revenge of Cobra, which I is not on some of the streaming services, like on Tubi. They have. The first G.I. Joe miniseries and then the regular series through um, Rise of Serpentor. So they have everything but except for the Revenge of Cobra five-part miniseries. And uh, Hasbro now has it on their YouTube channel. So I've been watching that, and uh, which I hadn't seen in so many years. And uh, it's kind of fun to relive those stories and those characters. It's kind of the first time they introduced, uh, I believe they, it's so when they first introduced uh, Flint and Lady J. I think. I'm sure a G.I. Joe toy slash cartoon historian could confirm that or correct me if I'm wrong.
<laughs> SWAT cats will be great to see me draw. Oh man, SWAT cats. Golly, that, that, that was from like the early 90s, right? I remember when I moved to Dallas to start attending art school, I had access to channels that I didn't have access to where I lived out in East Texas. So, uh, and where I lived at that time in, in the mid 80s to late 80s, early 90s, where I lived, didn't even have a Fox channel affiliate. So I was hearing about these shows like SWAT Cats or was it Karate Cat? Maybe I'm thinking of Karate Cat. Um, that might've been the one I was thinking of. Um, I think SWAT Cats might've been a little bit later um, after Karate Cat, but uh, there'd be all these shows I'd hear about uh, but just didn't have access to. Even shows like, you know, like 21 Jump Street and 90210 and uh, um, what else? Uh, Married with Children and In Living Color. Even The Simpsons. I'd heard that, you know, Simpsons were becoming popular, so I knew they existed, but I'd never had a chance to see their shows. I missed the first several seasons until I moved to Dallas, and then I was able to start watching it and, and uh, just watching Fox in general but watching Simpsons and, and, and shows like that. So uh, it uh, definitely was a bumpkin kid that kind of had to get caught up with some of the pop culture after I moved to the big city. Now the area of Texas where I grew up now, they, 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 they shortly after I moved to Dallas, they, they got uh, a Fox affiliate. They were probably just waiting for me to leave before they got in a Fox affiliate. But, um, but at that time, when Fox was still new and different markets were picking it up, adding it to their cable lineups, our cable provider had not done that yet. And we could not pull the signal out of the air with an antenna. Of course, then again, I don't even think we tried because I didn't want to give up all the cable channels we did have. We got these bone spurs or spurs spikes that stick off of his knees. Watching from Peoria, Illinois makes you want to get back into drawing? Yeah, come on back. Come on back to drawing. It's always here waiting for you. If you stop drawing, you can always start again. Come and have fun. That's what I'm all about. Have fun drawing. Because that's why we do it, you know, that's what, that's, that's what it's about, is having fun. Still encounter challenges. Challenges will happen. Absolutely. I, I, you know, we, no matter where you are in your art craft, you're still going to encounter challenges of the things you're trying to draw, you want to draw, need to find the technique to draw. But embracing those challenges can be fun if we allow ourselves to have the mindset of having fun. Oftentimes, from my experience. Thoughts on drawing on a computer? I think that is essentially vandalism. Don't draw on your computer. Don't draw on your computer. You paid good money for that computer. Don't draw on it. That's crazy. That's crazy talk. Uh, sorry, dad joke. Dad joke in progress. Drawing, uh, drawing, uh, I, I, I draw on a tablet. So it is essentially a computer. It's got the power of a laptop. I use a Wacom Mobile Studio Pro, and it's a really a lot of fun. Uh, I use the um, Clip Studio Paint. That's how I do my pencils, sketch work and pencils for the comics and covers I draw. I, I, I do that, the, the sketch and pencils digitally. Then I print that out in blue line on artboard and ink traditionally. Um, anything that's gonna be like 11 by 17 or larger than I, I like to, uh, work that that way um, just just to because uh, it gives me infinite number of, of possibilities in uh, the layouts and um, getting things getting just getting the initial initial lines down so that I know what I want to ink 
So yeah, I'm all for drawing digitally. Now, I'm not saying I prefer digital over traditional. I enjoy both because I like to have as many opportunities to create and, and, and tools in my art arsenal. That's why I started working on overcoming the challenge of learning how to draw, draw digitally. Uh, I'm not against digital at all. Um, I think it's, it can be really a great set of tools for, for creating. Can be really a really allow for really great stuff. You thought tablets would have taken over. Ah, oh, they might. Probably further as we work and work our way into the future. I imagine we'll draw only in digital. We might read only in digital. I mean, I haven't bought a, a music CD in years. Uh, I don't buy DVDs anymore because they're streaming. So um, digital is, you know, a pretty amazing way to um, enjoy content uh, and create content as well. So who knows what, what might happen in the future. I don't think we'll quickly ditch print, um, you know, magazines or books or, or creating art with traditional. Um, I think there will be a desire for it and then probably a need for it as well. Um, especially if people want to showcase an original piece, then you, you need traditional because you can create something digitally, but there is no one of a kind original. That's why I do my inks on artboard. I don't, I try not to ink an illustration digitally if I don't have to, because then I, I lose out on that opportunity to uh, possibly sell uh, the, the original art on the collector market. So, um, so having, having a one of a kind original traditional piece uh, is, is fun. It's cool. Cause anything that is a hard copy of a, of a, a digital illustration is just a, a print. It's not the one of a kind. Have I ever cried during a movie? Absolutely. Absolutely. Especially the movie. It's a wonderful life. That one gets me every holidays and gets me in different parts. Now, as I get older and I, I move through life, I, I, I relate to the movie in different ways. And it's like, sometimes my wife and I are watching at the holidays and all of a sudden I just, I get, I get the feels and it's like, why am I losing it here at this part of the movie? I've seen this movie dozens of times and this scene has never affected me, but now I am just feeling the, uh, the emotion <laughs> and she'll laugh and she'll be, she'll be welling up with tears too. And she goes, I know me too. I don't know why it's amazing. So. So yeah, yes, to answer your question, yes, I have cried during a movie. Oh, the Toy Story movies, oh my gosh. That, that'll that punch you right in the feels. Especially Toy Story 3. Toy Story 3 got me so good. Confession time here. Have y'all seen Toy Story 3? If you haven't seen Toy Story 3, you might wanna turn your volume down for uh, two or three minutes here because I'm gonna recount what happened in, in a scene in Toy Story 3. So if you haven't seen Toy Story 3, mute your video now. And then I'll give you a thumbs up when it's time to come back in. Uh, so in Toy Story 3, you know, when they're uh, in the, the trash compactor burner thing and they were all, you know, they're, they were heading towards the flame and uh, they, they, it looked like there was no way out. And, and they all started to, to take each other's hands kind of in comfort of each other. They started, all started holding hands. And the, the look those animators gave, I'm getting the chills just thinking about it. They gave those characters in their eyes, just the, the hopelessness and the love they had for each other, but the, the hopelessness of the situation was so powerful. I was just like, oh my gosh, I don't see any way out of this. I, am, I, I, I started choking up. I started getting tearing up. 
And um, they really captured such powerful emotion in that moment. It was such an incredible experience. And then, you know, they find their way out. I don't want to, in case someone didn't mute, I don't want to ex spoil what, what happened next. I know even though this movie is like, what, over five, ten years old, you probably should have seen the movie by now. But still, I want to be gracious to those that might have not seen the movie yet. So, and then it's just like, oh my gosh, I didn't see that coming. But of course that makes complete sense. Oh my gosh, that's so amazing. Oh, one of my favorite movie scenes. So if you were listening before, you can come back in now, or muted before, you can come back in. Um, so, yeah. Toy Story movies can really get you. Can really get me, I should say. Oh, when you saw the graphics on Toy Story 1 back in 95, you lost it. My wife and I, we, we re-watched the early Toy Stories. We were watching Toy Story 3, and I was like, we need to see Toy Stories 1 and 2. And I hadn't seen Toy Story 1 in like 10, 15 years. And, you know, Pixar had changed a lot over that time. I mean, Monsters, Inc. was a really big benchmark of change for them when they figured out how to really do hair really well. So we go back and we watch Toy Story 1, and I'm like, oh my gosh, this looks so different than what they've evolved to. I mean, I just didn't realize how how much they had changed, how, how it almost looked raw. It looked so raw compared to what we're used to now. And that really, it really shocked me at how almost, gosh, I don't even know the right word for it. It just looks so much better now. How about if I say it that way? I look so, so amazing what they evolved into with uh, the, the growth of technology over the, over time. Oh, Up? You love Up? Yeah. But, oh my gosh, the first eight minutes of that movie, the love story of of the old man. I forget the character's name. I've only seen the movie once, but it was so powerful. Man, his, his love story? Oh my gosh. Talk about losing it emotionally in a movie within the first ten minutes. It's like, how? Oh, it, it's like, can we just end the movie now because you've just devastated me, uh, Pixar. How, how, where can this movie go? I, I am so emotionally devastated. Um, it's such a powerfully told story there, just right there at the beginning alone. Just like, whoa, wow. Wow, wow, wow. Did not expect that, Pixar. You got me so good. All right, so we, I think we just about got Doomsday done here. Oh my gosh, there's a lot to Doomsday. We still have... This guy over here on this side. We've been going for an hour. It took an hour to do this. Whew. I still have to put some rubble back in here. Let's kind of play with some rubble there a little bit. I'm going to use my zebra brush pen for some darker shadow sections. So that that uh, doomsday really pops against th those darker chunks. What brand is this pan? Zebra. Zebra brush pan. Zebra like the animal. Though no zebras were harmed in the making of that brush pan, at least from what I'm, I have discerned. Just kind of giving it some rubbly rock texture here. Creating some really dense lines here. Dark shapes and dense lines 
so that his bony protrusions look different and don't get lost amongst the rubble. All right, so gang, I think we're just gonna have to uh, split this up, inks up into a two-parter here, because I don't wanna rush Superman here, and um, I did not think it would take this long to ink both sides. Just gonna go ahead and fill in his mouth here, just for the fun of it. Um, I did not think it would take this long just to ink just Doomsday himself here. Uh, but you know, sometimes it takes time. So what I'll do is I'll schedule a, a live stream for Superman. Uh, we'll see if maybe I can do that this weekend. So maybe we'll have a bonus live stream, a weekend live stream. Maybe not, it all depends on what I can, what I can do schedule wise. So um, make sure you're subscribed. Please subscribe to my channel. If you just discovered me here watching this on replay, that invitation goes to you as well. Please uh, subscribe to my channel so that when I schedule new live streams, um, you can be alerted. You know, make sure you set your notifications. And to do that, you just tap the little bell icon after you subscribe, just tap the bell and that will take you to where you can set your, uh, your notifications to alert you um, when I uh, schedule new art live streams or upload art videos. So, uh, so yeah, so, so go ahead and just do a little subs, subscribey right there, right now. I'll wait. And if you have already subscribed, thanks so much, gang. I appreciate that. Thank you for your support. If you like what you see, please leave me a thumbs up in the video here. Leave, leave a thumbs up for the video. And if you're watching on replay, feel free to leave a comment. And if you're, watch, if you're watching live, thanks for all your comments and questions. Sorry I couldn't address them all. Um, I do, do appreciate your interaction here during the live streams, for sure. As so oftentimes, so much of my focus goes into the artwork itself. So if I can schedule a live stream for this weekend, I'll try to announce that as early as I can. So make sure you're following my, on my social media as well. Are you on Twitter? Are you on Instagram? Do you have a Facebook page? Links to my accounts on those, uh, those social media and more are listed in the video description below as well. So um, just click on the link and you can go and give me a follow, follow over there on whichever one you might not be following me on yet. If you like seeing my art, make sure you're following me on Instagram. Because it's all about the pictures over there. So, just gonna wrap up this one piece of rubble and then we're gonna sign off for the night. It's hard to wanna stop, but I know I'm starting to get a little tired, so I don't want to enter into inking Superman feeling a little run down. I probably need to eat dinner or something. So, sometimes it's good to know where your body's at, because sometimes when you're too tired, you make maybe make some choices artistically that you wouldn't if your brain was fully charged and fueled 
So I like to just try to stay well rested and fueled um, before I go into, go into my art. Sometimes if I'm on a tough deadline and I still have to work anyway, I'll ink the things that don't require as tight precision precision like in the face or the hair I might work on I might work on the trees and the te uh, bark texture or the rubble here because it's if you, if you if I mess up drawing rubble you can't really tell it's it's rubble it's it's broken rock but if you mess up a face you you, you know then you <laughs> it's hard to hide that mistake if you if you ink a, a, a facial feature wrong so let's pull the pull back so we can see kind of the progress here like, let me just go ahead and unclip and just pull back so you can see. So that's what we got done there. That's a, that's a lot of work over there on Doomsday. And then the next live stream, we'll ink Superman and the rest of the rubble around him. And then the following live stream will be color. Hopefully we can get all the color done in one live stream. But who knows? We might have to break that up into two live streams. Depends on how... How difficult it is to to color so but this is definitely a lot of fun and i can't wait to start inking on superman so let's flip the camera around and we can wrap up this live stream here hey gang let me adjust the rig clip back in here's a shot of my nose hairs for you you can send me a thank you note letter later or thank you note letter. I'll take I'll take I'll take either. I'm not going to complain. Gang, thanks so much for hanging out with me. That was over an hour. That was like an hour and 12 minutes. Well, there's about 2 minutes of the intro. So we worked on this for about an hour and 10 minutes roughly. So uh yeah, I'll post a shot of this, a progress shot on my social media, definitely on my Instagram and probably my Twitter as well. And stay tuned to my social media, stay tuned to my channel here for when I schedule the next live stream. Could be this Saturday or Sunday. Most likely, if not then, then we'll, we'll, we'll get something going for Monday. Hopefully this uh, new internet connection has given you a better visual experience. Hopefully it has not been laggy or digitized for you. I look forward to going back and re-watching just different sections here to make sure that it is uh, better clarity of video. Because, um, hey, I'm spending my money for better service and uh, new, new hardware. So, um, yeah. Gang, thanks so much for hanging out with me. I hope you're staying well. Hope you have a great weekend. It's it's Memorial Day. It's uh, Memorial Day weekend, isn't it? So, um, yeah. So, I hope you have a great weekend. It's a different uh, Memorial Day weekend for us this year, being in this COVID-19 season. So, stay, stay safe. Stay well. Wash those hands. Um, be kind and gracious to anyone you encounter, because remember, we're all going th through this together. Uh, so, Sometimes our, our tempers or frustrations can flare up. That's understandable as human beings, but uh, if we can remember to have grace in our hearts and in our words, it can go a long way to encourage another and hopefully encourage you as well. Because uh, you know, if, if we can stay, stay tight together, then, then hopefully we can get through this and back to normal as soon as possible. So uh, I know different people, People in different parts of the country and different parts of the world have different situations as far as stay at home and stuff goes. Um, so wherever you are, please be cautious, please be careful, and please be kind and gracious. Um, and hopefully we can just carry that on into uh, when we get back to normal life is uh, keeping that kindness and, and, and grace, grace uh, rocking and rolling. Because <laughs> um, that's how I like to rock and roll, filled with grace um, as best as possible. You know, none of us do this perfectly, but at least we can try, huh? That's what I'm, about. I'm all about, trying. Trial and error. That's how I got to where I am today. Taking a shot, try, fail, learn, try again. So, <laughs> gang, always good to hang out with you. Look forward to seeing you again. Till then, I'm Todd Knock. Keep on drawing. Keep having fun. Take care, everybody. Stay well.